you know the reason we're doing this is because the supermarkets are closed on Thanksgiving, you see. When you think of Thanksgiving, what is the first thing that comes to your mind? If you said turkey, pilgrim, civil war holidays, or the Macy's Day Parade, you'd be wrong. No, the right answer is rock soup, sneezing, really bad jazz music, and cavemen. I mean, that's what I think of when I think of Thanksgiving. If you need a crash course in the real meaning of Thanksgiving, look no further than the animated special B.C. The First Thanksgiving. B.C. The First Thanksgiving was released in 1973, and not surprisingly, it aired once and was pretty much forgotten thereafter. It tried really hard to ride on the coattails of the success of Peanuts, but unlike Peanuts, it has no redeeming qualities. As we will see, it has almost nothing to do with Thanksgiving. But its most egregious sin is that it's not very funny. And no, it's not because it's an old cartoon. There are plenty of old, timeless cartoons. Looney Tunes, Tom and Jerry, and GoBots. Where are they taking them? To the prison moon to be disassembled, which is well willing that if we don't get out of here. The jokes I feel were dated in 1973. The main character talks like Jack Benny for no reason whatsoever. I mean, think about it. In 1973, how relevant was Jack Benny? It's 2016. Any young person watching this is going to have no idea or even get the joke. Being that nice, people will hate me before the show gets started. You know, they'll think I'm conceited or egotistical. Imagine how embarrassed I am caught announcing me as the world's greatest comedian. I said Americus. Oh. <laughs> you know, the reason we're doing this is because the supermarkets are closed on Thanksgiving, you see. I would be surprised if people were even familiar with BC the comic strip. Hell, I would be shocked to find actual fans counted among the living. I mean, I'll be honest, I was shocked to find out that it's still being written today. For me personally, I don't even really remember reading BC back in the day. I was more into Kelvin and Hobbes and the far side. BC looked boring to me as a kid. I never knew anyone that actually read this comic. BC is a daily comic strip created by cartoonist Johnny Hart. Set in prehistoric times, it features a group of cavemen and anthropomorphic animals from various geological eras. BC made its newspaper debut on February 17th, 1958. But what makes BC weird is its creator Johnny Hart and his uber-religious convictions. In 1999, he stated that Jews and Muslims who don't accept Jesus will burn in hell and that homosexuality is the handiwork of Satan. He also said that the world was going to end in 2010. With Hart's increasing tendency to incorporate religious and political themes into his comics, certain newspapers began to not print them or move them to other sections of the paper, like the religious section. And with that little rundown, let's get into this horrendous special. The special starts and we are introduced to our main character. First time watching this, I had no idea who it is because he just starts talking and no name is given. But his name is BC in case you really care. The video mentions almost no one else by name. Now imagine watching Peanuts. Imagine it's your first time watching the Peanuts Christmas special. You're sitting there and you're watching it and everybody's introduced but nobody gives their names. This is what it's like when you watch BC the first Thanksgiving. So the special begins and lightning hits a tree and causes it to start on fire. Our boy BC walks out and burns his hand because he doesn't know what fire is. <laughs> you see the gag is... He walks out, he initially puts his hand in the fire, but it doesn't burn right away until he goes back into the cave. See, that's funny, right? BC walks out with his club and beats the fire out. Not realizing what fire is, it again burns his hand and he walks back into the cave. And once again, we get the really unfunny delayed scream. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> 
He then comes out and for no particular reason, sniffs the fire. This causes him to sneeze, reigniting the fire. I mean, isn't that funny? I can't stop laughing at it. It's so funny. I can't believe how thanksgivingly funny this clip is. But if you'd ever wanted to know how fire was discovered, there you go. Not in some great flash of human understanding, but some dipshit sneezing on it. I guess the fire magically reignites because I don't think I've ever heard of a sneeze reigniting a fire. I guess we're supposed to believe that the force of the sneeze is what reignites the fire. Never mind that CO2 and snot are expelled and would probably put the fire out before it would even reignite. Now that we've set up a gag, burned it into the ground, let's set up its big payoff. BC notices a volcano, so he walks up to it and just takes one deep breath and sneezes. <laughs> we get it, he's trying to learn, but he just took a huge deep breath from a spewing volcano. Look, I know it's a cartoon, but come on. Beyond CO2 emitting from the volcano, it also emits sulfur dioxide and hydrogen sulfide. Both are bad. In case I have to explain this joke, here we go. He noticed that the volcano was spewing smoke, so he thought that he could get it to reignite. Well, that didn't work. Or did it? I mean, that was the funniest thing I've ever seen. I can't stop laughing. Anyways, moving on. Never mind that he would be dead from the shockwave. Even if he somehow survived the shockwave, the sound wave would cause him to lose his fucking hearing. I get it. It's a cartoon. But why am I psychoanalyzing it? Well, to be fair, it's fucking boring and it's not goddamn funny. I need to keep myself occupied somehow. Here would be a good time to break and talk about that music. It sucks. And like 20% of the special is this crappy music. The other 80% is awkward, unfunny jokes. Crappy smooth jazz? It's not really the first thing I think of when I think of prehistoric times. Speaking of unfunny, check this out. using a turtle as a lawnmower. Real original and oh so funny. I must not be sophisticated enough to get this. This scene in particular, which is about seven minutes into the special, makes one stop and wonder, what does this have to do with Thanksgiving? I don't know. What does this have to do with Thanksgiving? Let's take a moment to talk about the right way to introduce characters. Not even so much introducing, but at least putting a name to a face. Perfect example of this is the Peanuts Christmas special. The scene in particular that I'm talking about is the scene where everyone's doled out their jobs for the play. Take Pigpen, for instance. We know what Pigpen is. He is the owner of the inn. Pigpen, you're the innkeeper. In spite of my outward appearance, I shall try to run a neat inn. Shermie, you're a shepherd. Every Christmas it's the same. I always end up playing a shepherd. On the flip side, let's take a look at how BC introduces its characters. It doesn't. Everybody gets two or three seconds of screen time, and we, the audience, better know who they are because they are not fucking mentioned by name. I mean, I had to do research to find out who these characters were. I know it's my fault for not being familiar with this crappy comic, but come on. They should at least be mentioned by fucking name. Or better yet, if you don't want to do that, Put a subtitle and write Jack Off 1 and Jerk Off 2. Do something to help the audience. So let's meet our characters. 
First is the dinosaur. I know, real original name. <laughs> Would you ever stop and think that this is a character that needs an introduction? We are then introduced to Peter. <laughs> Next is the fat broad, and yes, that is her name. <laughs> Then Grog! <laughs> then we have my personal favorite, Clumsy Carp. I'm obviously lying. He is not my favorite. I know nothing about him. <laughs> Thor, the inventor of the wheel. <laughs> and don't forget about the cute chick, and yes, that is her name also. And lastly, we have Wily with his peg leg. <laughs> Hope you got your fill because most are never mentioned by name or appear again. I would like to point out that all of these useless introductions were used to set up one gag. Man, wasn't that funny? A thrill a minute. So Peter walks up to BC and says the following. I see you discovered fire. It's about time, sweetheart. Fire? What? So he was expecting BC to discover fire? So in Peter's mind, he knew about the existence of fire before BC discovered it, but decided that BC had to be the one to discover it. Why does that make no sense? Also, why does he talk with that lame Humphrey Bogart accent? Any particular reason? About as much reason for him to know about fire before fire was discovered. So after that mindfuck, this happens. You will never guess what I've discovered. So, you're the guy with the fire! Yeah. Oh, where the heck have you been? Well, I got this itinerary. You wanna slap it on those sticks right over there? Yeah, well, uh... We're running late. Did you get that? Let's break it down. Remember, BC just discovered fire. But yet... Somehow Peter knew about fire before BC discovered it. So BC gets to the fat broad and she says, it's about time you got here with the fire. How does she know what fire is? Did Peter inform her what fire was or did she come from the future? Did she create a time paradox? You created a time paradox. Never mind that they just discovered fire. She also somehow knows that fire can be used to cook. She has to be from the future. After starting the fire, a turkey comes wandering up and we get our first Thanksgiving reference almost 12 minutes into the fucking special. Rock soup. Let's see. There's only one way to flavor rock soup and that's with a dead turkey. A dead turkey? <laughs> A dead turkey to season rock soup? That seems random. I actually found a recipe for rock soup and it says nothing about a single whole dead turkey. Questions are once again raised. How do they know you need a dead turkey for rock soup? One could argue they've been making rock soup for a long time but only eating it cold. But I get the sense that they are just making this for the first time and just winging it. I mean, there is game all over the place. Wouldn't any of that be sufficient to replace turkey and it would still be rock soup? Is it because this is the Thanksgiving rock soup as opposed to everyday rock soup? I mean, no one tells us. How are we supposed to know? In the next scene, the fat broad peps the hunters up like they're playing a football game, and we see how stupid they are. There's only one way to flavor rock soup, and that's with a dead turkey, right? Right, right. Yeah. yeah! We gotta get out there and get that bird! Get, get that, that bird. bird! Get, get that, that bird. bird! And when we get him, what are we gonna do? What, what are we gonna, gonna do? do? What are we gonna do? 
What are we gonna do, you dummies? We're gonna hit them high and we're gonna hit them low. Got it? Got it? Got it? Got it? Got it. Fully egged on, the hunters take off to find a turkey when this happens. What the heck is a twinkie? You don't know what a turkey is. Are you kidding? I mean, come on. So the guy who knows what fire was before fire was invented doesn't know what a turkey is? And check out Wiley's response. Exactly? I'll tell you exactly. It can pull the moon out of its orbit. Uh, sorry, wrong clip. Try this one. Well, uh, she's got a skinny neck like this. Yeah? And a nose like this. Mm -hmm. Uh, with skinny legs and a beautiful tail feather. You sure that's a donkey? It ain't Barbara Streisand. Mm, it's possible. Barbara Streisand? Really? You mean this Barbara Streisand? he know who she is but doesn't know what a turkey is i mean do i need to say it fine go ahead you created a time paradox hey i guess it proves she's been around since prehistoric times with that mind fuck done the turkey reappears and starts singing turkeys turkeys who love turkeys are the loveliest uh -oh. Yes, it's a turkey singing about loving turkeys. You can take this one of two ways. The turkey wants to fuck other turkeys, or the turkey is a mother humping cannibal. Either way, it's out of place. As if the special hasn't been enough of a mindfuck, this happens. <laughs> Y'all catch cold now, yeah? This is where we gotta kinda stop and explain what's wrong with this character. First, she doesn't even really have a name. She's called The Cute Girl. For comparison, do you remember this character? Uh, Gesundheit. Yeah, the fucking turtle. Well, guess what? It has a name. Its name is John. Not the turtle, John. And for some reason, Mel Blanc does the voice. You know, of Bugs Bunny fame? Whatever. I only mention this because she is named the cute girl. And the turtle is named John. And that's where the problem is. Look, I'm not saying that Johnny Hart might be sexist, but I'm saying Johnny Hart might be a sexist. So what's the deal with this character? Well, apparently she's a sex object in a world where they don't know about objectifying women. There's two ways of looking at this. Either she and everybody else is innocent, or she's supposed to be stupid. And if you look at what happened, she is not only objectified by the bros, the fucking turkey objectifies her. So it's pretty clear that Johnny Hart meant her to be stupid, which might be even worse. Oh, and by the way, she also hit on the turkey, which says a lot about her, again, being stupid. This scene just hurts my brain. Again, was this supposed to be funny? For no apparent reason, we cut to a scene of the stupid dinosaur and it drinks all the rock water for no fucking reason. I mean, that was funny, right? Who wouldn't think that this was funny? Anybody? Didn't think so. Back to the cave dicks, mid chase with cannibal turkey, this happens. Gobble, 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 gobble. What? Why? Okay. What does this have to do with anything? Uh, the best part is this. Look, oh, man, if you're gonna do it, do it right. It goes more like this. Dude, 
dude, that turkey is straight up gangsta. Oh, that shit was gangsta. BC chases the turkey and the turkey hides in a phone? Wait, they have phones? They don't know what fire or turkeys are, but they know what phones are. I hate to keep doing this, but fuck it. You created a time paradox. Hiding in the tree, the turkey gets dumbass to turn into his superhero, the Night Sculptor. Hello? I'd like to speak to the Midnight Skulker. Oh, yeah, okay, uh, one minute, please. Kid, go get him. The Midnight Skulker speaking. Why does he have a superhero alter ego? Who knows? I don't even care at this point. This special jumped the rails a long time ago. The Midnight Skulker gets a call from the turkey, but maybe it should have been this. The Midnight Skulker speaking. I'm Rath Thompson, and I live in Wee Creek, Colorado. Uh, if, if, nothing, if, if, if you're set up, you're still here tomorrow night. I'm going to destroy it and uh, uh, write about it. Yeah, I write column, uh, in several. I write about a lot of things. You might have heard but read my name somewhere. I write about, I write books. I write things that get out and people read. I'll, bring, I'll read your fucking name. You goddamn idiot, you fuck up my system. Or maybe gotten a call from... The Midnight Skulker speaking. When I'm getting my colon irrigated, I just wanted to say something about the internet. You know, the information superhighway, the World Wide Web. Well, I don't. I buy a CD online, and then I rip the music into a different format so I can listen to it while I'm jogging. I mean, it's incredible. I also like chess and cooking and bestiality, so the internet is really good for my hobbies. I think it's amazing. I used to go out a lot, but I don't have to go out ever again. It's incredible. I don't envy those kids with their stock options or their fast cars. They earn them. The internet has saved my life. This scene literally goes on forever. It's only there to pad the video out. We're finally nearing the end of this fucking thing, and having failed to catch the turkey, they decide to sit down to a dinner of rocks. I want to remind everyone that this is supposed to be a Thanksgiving special. Then we get some preachy bullshit to try to tie this to Thanksgiving. Okay, nobody digs in till we give thanks. Thanks? We must acknowledge the great provider. That ain't you, is it? No, stupid. Okay, everybody bow their heads. This opportunity to say grace at this table. But most of all, I want to thank thee for giving me a humble turkey, the upper... A humble turkey?! Wise crack and turkey. It was supposed to be funny, right? <laughs> yeah, funny. And just when you think that this video can't drop any more turds, it drops one of the biggest. This has been the toughest day of my whole life. Mine too. I guess I shouldn't be shocked, but I am. The turkey has a British accent. And not to be undone, the fat broad now sounds like a dude. And she eats a rock. I mean, why not, right? What a crock of shit. It was nice of you to let the turkey go. What do you mean, let him go? I just passed him on the way up the hill. <laughs> this has been the toughest day of my whole life. Mine too. Wow, that just makes me think of Thanksgiving. If this is what the first Thanksgiving was like, makes you wonder why there was ever a second one. So that was BC, the first Thanksgiving. And we now can safely say that it's one of the worst holiday specials ever. It had nothing to do with Thanksgiving and even less to do with humor. Well, I guess the question is, what would one take away after watching this? I don't have a fucking clue. I firmly believe it was just a cheap cash grab and it shows. This special wasn't funny in 1973 and in 2016, it's goddamn unbearable. I'm just glad that they learned their lesson and didn't make another one. Especially a Christmas episode, right? Wait, what?
No, that can't be right. No. No. It's not true. That's impossible! You gotta be kidding me. This can't be fucking real. Oh, Santa, fucking help us. No! I see you discovered fire. It's about time, sweetheart. Rock soup. I see. There's only one way to flavor rock soup, and that's with a dead turkey. Hi, turkey. This has been the toughest day of my whole life. Mine too. <laughs> <laughs>